Hello everyone, I am John from AF Anime, and today I'm going to be reviewing One Piece chapter 1028. So, this week's chapter is titled Bronchio Snakus, and it pretty much is relevant to something that occurs toward the end of the chapter, so I suppose we can address that once we get there. But first and foremost, we're going to talk about the color cover page that we got for this week, and it is an amazing one in my personal opinion. This is as an anime and manga fan, also a gamer. This one seems to be of the Straw Hat crew and an homage toward the Nintendo legacy. I mean, to begin with, we see that Nami and Usopp are actually both playing video games, while the remainder of the Straw Hat members are spread throughout the color cover page and they seem to each be paying homage to a different Nintendo character or Nintendo property. Now, first and foremost, we seem to have Luffy, who appears to be in Ken's getup from the Street Fighter franchise, and he is fighting with Frankie, who appears to be in Donkey Kong's getup from the Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Country franchise. And of course, not to be outdone, Zoro plays a character from my favorite Nintendo franchise, that being the Legend of Zelda series and its titular character, Link. And unfortunately, I'm not 100% sure about the other Straw Hat members, but the last character that I can see a reference to would be Jinbei and his similarities to Super Mario. And as mentioned, I don't really recognize the references if there are any to the other Straw Hats. So if you guys know who the other Straw Hats are referring to or what video game franchises they're representing, please let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, moving on with the chapter now, we start off in the guest parlor inside the castle, and the first character that we see is the Mary who is playing the Seamuson alongside the CP0 members. Now, unlike the previous chapters where we did visit this parlor with the CP0 members, it was used for exposition, but this time we actually get a little bit of story building and even some tension to add to the current conflicts going on in the Wano arc. Now, just like we did in the previous times we visited this parlor, we get an update on the numbers that have to do with the battle and the rebellion. Now, it looks like the numbers have shifted a bit more and they're currently at 12,000 versus 8,000, which is nearly getting even. But the more important thing that we experience from this part of the chapter is that we see that this CP0 member is actually in contact with Rob Lucci. And after a little bit of banter about whether or not the CP0 member who's present in Wano believes that Kaido will lose or win, we do get some important information from Rob Lucci, revealing that regardless of the outcome of the rebellion, the world government is down to take another stab at capturing and acquiring Nico Robin. And what's more, it seems that the world government is already sending ships to Wano in the off chance that Kaido actually loses, they want to be in place to essentially annex Wano and put it directly under the world government's control. Now, this is actually a rather interesting update to the story and seemingly very important, but I'll discuss that more toward the end of the video during the discussion section. In any case, after seeing that Robin is up and running again, the chapter moves back to Momonosuke and Yamato, and it seems that Momonosuke is having trouble conjuring up the clouds. And through the dialogue, we see that he still has a little bit of reserve and a little bit of fear in regards to failing this important scenario. However, we don't spend a whole lot of time with Momonosuke. We also get to see that Yamato is separating herself from Momo. And this is because Yamato wants to go and apparently disarm the bombs that could go off should Momonosuke fail in his task of keeping Onigashima afloat. And as we see the dialogue between these two before she officially departs, we do actually get to see Yamato's hybrid form and her full Zoan form, which if I had to say so myself is one of the more amazing looking Zoans that I've seen so far in One Piece. Now that's pretty much it that we get to see from Momonosuke and Yamato for this chapter, but it does seem that Yamato is placing faith in Momonosuke, which is also applying a little bit of pressure for him to succeed on his own. I do think this is actually a pretty good narrative choice in the sense that it is pushing Momonosuke to grow up a little bit faster and to learn to take things into his own control in a way that a shogun of an entire country would have to do should it come down to protecting his country or even making uh, political decisions. Now after we leave those two, the next thing we see is Sanji and Queen's fight continuing. And based on appearances, it would seem that Queen has the upper hand on Sanji and in fact is trying to push Sanji to bring out his Germa suit. And for Queen, at least, this seems to kind of have a dual effect. One, to push Sanji to his strongest point, more or less to end the fight properly, and also to experience and more than likely take notes on the technology that Judge had incorporated into Sanji's suit. Now, this would seem to be the case since Queen mentions that Sanji used the suit versus King and managed to disappear. 
Now, it would appear that Queen is accusing Sanji of using Judge's science, but not with certainty. So it's possible that Judge has had some advancements since last working with Queen, and Queen himself may not have the ability to make things disappear. Either way, Sanji seems pretty adamant about not putting the suit on. So in an attempt for Queen to push Sanji into using the suit, he charges up a move that is called Black Coffee Beam. However, Sanji responds by dodging, charging up his Diablo Jambe, and using a move called Bien Quit Grill Shot. And it seems that this move had a decent amount of effect on Queen as he mentions that it does pack a good punch. But Queen responds in a very odd manner. And first he does that by switching out of his hybrid form and into his full Zoan form. And then he uses a technique that is the namesake of this week's chapter, Bronchio Snakes. He lines himself up and stands upright on all fours. And when he extends his tail and his head or his neck, uh, they form a straight line and then they shoot out of the body like a giant snake. And now admittedly, I'm no dino expert, but I've never heard of this being a thing. But Queen apparently tries to play it off as being a natural technique or bodily function of a, an actual brachiosaurus. I'm gonna say that that's really just a character quirk of Queen's to be goofy and to kind of, you know, embellish a little bit, because everyone who sees it seems to be very shocked that that's actually something he can do. But in any case, he proceeds to wrap around Sanji in a coil-like manner, and when he does, he says that even masters of armament hockey have not been able to escape the clutches of the brachio coil. And even though his head and tail have detached from the main body as a snake form, it appears that he's outfitted his shoulders with cannons of sorts. And it's supposed to launch when he says brachio launchers, but it does because he's trying to explain that he can attack with brachio launchers. It's a little bit of one piece comedy, but it does have some narrative purpose as in it's setting us up to understand that Sanji's body has become horribly different and not in a bad way per se, but it's just different from before where he, you know, obviously could have broken limbs or broken bones. It appears that the Germa 66 DNA within his body has started to function in a similar way to his brothers and his sister. Now, this is something that most One Piece readers were speculating as a possibility when he mentioned that his body felt weird as he and Zoro began to prepare their fight for king and queen. And this is pretty much confirmed at the end of the chapter where Queen uses his sword on Sanji and it flat out breaks on his face. And it doesn't appear that Sanji in any way, shape or form is using armament hockey to protect himself. So that is actually how the chapter ends with us seeing that Sanji has potentially gotten an amazing upgrade of sorts. All right, now if anyone's seen these reviews for One Piece from this channel before, then you know that I like to do a ratings portion of the video where I rate the artwork, the story, and the hype from this week's chapter. And as always, I tend to start with the artwork. And for this week's chapter, I'm going to give the artwork a 9. I mean, overall, this week's artwork was pretty good. I wasn't mind-blowing per se not a 10 but it was very consistent and very clear-cut in terms of seeing what's going on who's present and what they're doing really i mean i don't think oda had that much time or opportunity to kind of goof off with the artwork here i mean we get the full zo and form reveal for yamato we get to see rob lucci again we get to see momo in his dragon form we get to see queen in his awesomeness we get to see sanji some of the other straw hats and then we get to see queen's uh hybrid alongside his full form and even when we get the comedy sections, we get to see Izo, Hyokoro, and Chopper respond and react to Queen's transformations. So whether it was just a reveal, whether it was a bit of comedy, a bit of action, or just some dialogue, all of the artwork was pretty impressive for this chapter. And now moving on to my ratings for this week's story, and I'm going to give that an 8. I mean, in terms of updates and information, there isn't a whole lot of new things to go on, but the short amount of new concepts and new problems for the Wano arc, and this is when we learn that the world government is coiled and ready to strike, regardless of the outcome of this very influential battle. And there's a small part of me that thinks that this is just a bit repetitive with, you know, Rob Lucci issuing the order to go after Nico Robin, but ultimately I think the world government being present and having an ulterior motive aside from just, you know, taking over Wano when it's been wrecked, 
It does a great job of adding some tension and letting us know that even if Kaido somehow is defeated, it won't just be clean cut, simple celebration like it would be in most other cases. So the Straw Hats will have to protect Robin once again from Cypherpole. And when it comes to Queen and his relationship to Judge and his relationship to Sanji and their fight, I think the story did pretty well this chapter since we get to see that Queen is in, still interested in Judge's technology. He's not just, you know, doing what Kaido wants in the sense of defeating his opponent quickly and then moving on to assist others. He actually is curious about what Judge did with that technology and possibly about getting the access to that invisibility on his own. And even though we already know Sanji's character in the sense that he doesn't want to be associated with the Vin Smokes or their technology or their unhuman like bodies this still could actually play into him using it as a tool to support the pirate king so i think the story in this chapter did a really good job of pacing everything out and then also giving us stuff to look forward to in terms of straw hat power-ups uh and now the world government getting involved in a conflict that is between essentially two yonkos so in lieu of last week's chapter story rating which i gave pretty low this one has bounced back in spades now, in regards to hype for this week's chapter, we do get a little bit of action, but the hype levels really weren't that high. I mean, it's nice seeing Rob Luchin, and it's nice to know that there's kind of a, a, you know, a pending explosion in the background once the whole Kaido situation is done and over with, at least in terms of the world government. It's still not a whole lot to get hype about because we know that conflict is chapters upon chapters away. First and foremost, the ships aren't there at Wano yet. We still have the big mom pirates to deal with. We still have Kaido himself to deal with. So there isn't a whole lot of hype in regards to the, what we got revealed in the first chapter with Rob Lucci and the CP0. And in terms of the fight between Sanji and Queen, nothing gets resolved and no one really takes the upper hand in that fight. We just learned that Sanji is essentially a physical damage tank even without needing to use armament hockey. I mean, ultimately, this does set up the potential for a good or more interesting fight on behalf of Sanji and his character growth, but I'll touch on that during the discussion portion. So yeah, in terms of hype, I think this chapter was decent, just not really impressive, so I'm going to give that a 6. Alright, and now with an art, story, and hype ratings in, we're going to get the average of 7.66 for this week's chapter of One Piece, chapter 1028, which is titled Brachio Snakes. All right, so now it's time for a little bit of discussion about this chapter, and the first thing I want to address is the first thing that is addressed in the chapter itself, and that is the world government and their impending influence on the situation in Wano. Now, obviously, they would have a multitude of reasons to want to annex or to take over Wano, given that Kaido loses and is no longer a threat. Now, when it comes to the fact that they've had their borders shut off to the world government or weren't a part of the 20 kingdoms who signed up to be a part of the world government, they do have interest in things like the swordsmen of Wano, the weapons of Wano, and also the resources such as the sea stone prism. Now, I would imagine, as with most of Luffy's fight, he's probably going to be drained after fighting Kaido. But I am intrigued to see how this works out. I mean, I don't actually want to see the typical old straw hats save a nation and then run away from the navy at the end i actually would not mind seeing them defend nico robin from the world government once again and the other point of contention about this chapter that i want to discuss would be sanchi and his situation obviously he does not want to have the same body style and the same quote-unquote monster qualities as his siblings but if you think about the grand scheme of things this is something that could help elevate the Straw Hat Pirates to the next level in the sense that Sanji is, I guess, more defensively capable. Since most people kind of suggest that Zoro is the strongest Straw Hat aside from Luffy himself, for Sanji to take the cake in terms of defense and possibly even embracing the technology of his family. I mean, this could do wonders for Sanji's character growth, or at the very least, his ability to want to provide for the Pirate King or the future Pirate King by doing the best he can. I mean, I can't imagine that he wouldn't be mad at himself if he was responsible for the straw has to take a loss because he refused to do something. You know, if his armament hockey won't activate because he won't attack a woman, that's fine. That's his motive. But if he loses a fight to Queen because he would not use his father's technology, I can't help but think that he'd be salty about that. 
So I'm really hoping that by the next couple chapters, or at the very least by the end of the Sanji and Queen fight, that Sanji might get a little more appreciation, if not appreciation, then a little more drive to use every tool in his arsenal to help Luffy and the Straw Hats attain whatever W's they can get while handling these one-on-one -on -one fights. So I'm very interested to see how Oda really approaches this situation with Sanji, as it appears that the more he uses the suit, the more similar his body style becomes like his siblings. So maybe that'll give him a little bit of inner turmoil in terms of whether or not to use the suit in cases of emergencies. But part of me really just hopes that Oda allows Sanji to go down the whole my will is stronger than my body bit and embrace it. And aside from those two topics, the only other thing worth addressing is the fact that we got to see Yamato's full Zoan form, which I think looks amazing, but it's really nothing to uh, yap about, I suppose. There's no new information about the character's form. There's no new techniques or anything. We just get the, the visual reveal. So good on Oda for that. All right, well, this video has gone on long enough. My name is John from AF Anime. If you guys like this video, please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Also, let me know in the comments section down below if you want to discuss something about the chapter or if there's any anime or manga that you would like me to review. Once again, I am John, and I will catch you guys in the next video.